As I'm sure you know, every four years, America elects the President of the United States. And every two years, we elect people to represent us in Congress. But what about in the years between presidential and midterm elections? What happens in odd-numbered years, like 2023? Well, a lot. In fact, this Tuesday, voters in Kentucky, Virginia, Mississippi, Ohio, and Pennsylvania will be giving us hints about what 2024 may look like, and cities, counties, and school boards will be holding local elections. There's a very good chance that your city council or school board will be holding elections this week. I'm here to summarize the four most important elections this Tuesday and to explain why you should care. Let's start out with... Kentucky is a Republican state. There's no possible doubt of this. It voted for Donald Trump by over 25 points back in 2020. So why is it important? Well, because of this guy, Andy Beshear. Beshear is the incumbent governor of Kentucky, and he's notably a Democrat. He managed to barely win back in 2019, and he's up for re-election. His opponent is Attorney General and Trump ally Daniel Cameron. Bashir has painted himself more as a moderate and promised to protect abortion rights while criticizing Daniel Cameron for being unclear of his position on certain issues, like school vouchers. Meanwhile, Cameron has criticized Bashir for being relatively liberal on transgender issues, weak on crime, and trigger-happy with shutdowns. Governor races, especially in off-election years, tend to be less partisan compared to federal elections, like for the presidency or for Congress. But in the past few years, states like Massachusetts and Maryland have replaced their moderate Republican governors with partisan Democrats, and vice versa just last month in Louisiana. As polarization continues to get worse and worse in a post-2016 era, the Kentucky governor race will be an important test to see how partisan gubernatorial elections have become, and to test how important incumbent is in this increasingly polarized America. Most prediction outlets have rated this from either a toss-up to lean Bashir. So far, Bashir has managed to win every single poll against Cameron, but 2020 and 2022 have taught us that polls aren't very stable anymore. Personally, I think it'll be either lean or likely Democratic, with Bashir winning by around five points. If analysts and polls are right and Bashir manages to hold on and win re-election, it will be a victory for Democrats. On the other hand, if Daniel Cameron can pull off an upset and oust Bashir, it will be a huge victory for Republicans after massively underperforming in 2022 and failing in special and off-year elections across the country. A victory for Cameron here would probably be the biggest win for a Republican since Glenn Youngkin winning the governor race in Virginia back in 2021. Speaking of, In 2021, Republicans scored a massive victory by narrowly electing Glenn Youngkin governor of Virginia, a typically democratic state. Republicans also managed to flip Virginia State House, the House of Delegates, getting them a majority in the chamber. But the Virginia State Senate wasn't up for election that year. So the majority, Democrats won back in 2019, is able to block any conservative legislation that Republicans submit. But the state Senate is up for election this year, meaning that Republicans have a chance to win the chamber and earn a trifecta, meaning that they can pass any legislation they like without input from Democrats. And Glenn Youngkin is very popular there. He's been campaigning in hopes of helping down-ballot referendums recreate his success in 2021. And he probably would have been extremely successful in doing so, if not for one thing the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Glenn Youngkin was elected in a Roe v. Wade world, meaning that even if he wanted to, he and the Republican Party wouldn't be able to institute any strict abortion ban. That's all changed though, and Democrats have been warning that if Republicans hold the state house and flip the state senate, they could institute an abortion ban. This messaging has been successful across the country. And part of the reason why state legislative forecasts see analysis ranks both the state house and state senate as lean democratic. A victory for Republicans here means holding on to the state house while flipping the state senate, and a victory for Democrats here means winning at least one chamber so they can continue to block conservative legislation, although Democrats are hoping they can win both. Side note, the competitive 57th House District has had a pretty notable scandal. The Democratic candidate, Susanna Gibson, was exposed for performing sex acts with her husband online for money. Virginia Republicans have mailed pictures containing, uh explicit content to houses in the district. 
It'll be interesting to see how much voters will care about a delegate having a sex scandal like this online, and also seeing if Virginia Republicans mailing these pictures could backfire on them if voters see it in poor taste. Kentucky isn't the only state having a governor race, although Mississippi is probably less important. The current incumbent governor, Republican Tate Reeves, is running for re-election, but he faces popular Democrat Brandon Presley. Reeves, a conservative Republican, has been criticized for his opposition to Medicaid expansion, his poor handling of the Jackson water crisis, and potential corruptions in a welfare benefit scandal. Even despite all of this, he's favored to win re-election because of how conservative and polarized Mississippi is, which is why most analysts have rated it either lean or likely Republican. In other words, if Democrats managed to flip the seat, it would be a huge disaster and embarrassment for both Mississippi and national Republicans. Activists in Ohio have successfully organized a ballot referendum to put abortion protections in the state constitution. Ohio Republicans realized that they were going to get enough signatures and thought, oh crap, they're about to overturn our abortion ban. And so back in August, submitted a referendum to make the constitution require a 60% vote to be changed instead of the f normal 50% vote. Pro-choice Ohio residents pretty quickly realized what it was about and successfully defeated the referendum by a massive margin of 14 points, meaning they would only need 50% of Ohio citizens to approve the legalization of abortion. Most polls have shown the referendum succeeding by a margin of 20 or more points. And by most, I mean literally all of them. This would be a huge win for pro-choice activists and Democrats in a state that has become increasingly more conservative. This referendum could also show the potential victory route for Sherrod Brown, the Democratic senator up for re-election in 2024 in a race that is expected to be one of the most competitive in the country. This is arguably the least important of the five I've talked about, but it's still worth taking a look at. As of right now, Democrats hold four out of the seven seats on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, while Republicans hold two, with one vacancy being filled in this election. Republicans won't be able to flip the court, but if they manage to win this seat, they'll be one step closer to doing so. So far, it seems likely the Democrats will be able to win this seat and maintain their previous five to seven majority before the vacancy occurred, but there's only been one poll so far, so it's difficult to say. So there you have it, the most important elections in 2023 summarized. There's a pretty good chance you have city or school board elections in your area, and you can find information on it either on your Secretary of State's website or on Ballotpedia, the second of which will be linked in the description. I hope that this November, you'll know both your local races and the most important ones to watch nationwide.